What's up? My name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll take you through installing a desktop environment in WSL Ubuntu. Essentially, WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux, you can run Ubuntu, Debian, or any other Linux operating system on your PC. And in this video, I'll show you how to get a desktop environment so you can click around in different Windows, run programs, etc. as you would under a VM. Just it has access to your network, your files, and of course, it doesn't need any extra configuration like running a virtual machine does. That being said, even though I'll be showing you Ubuntu in this video, you can use pretty much any Linux distribution, just the installation command might be a bit different if it's not Debian based. So without further ado, let's get into it. First of all, of course, you'll need WSL installed, the Windows subsystem for Linux. For that, you'll need Windows 10 Pro, I think it is, or above. Anyways, hit start, type in features, and open turn Windows features on or off. Inside of here, we'll simply scroll down to the very bottom and look for Windows Subsystem for Linux. Take this as well as I'm pretty sure the virtual machine platform up here. Once you have both of these ticked, hit OK and the features will then be downloaded and activated. If it asks you to restart your PC, now's the time to go ahead and do so. Then when you're back onto Windows, hit Start and open either PowerShell or Windows Terminal if you're on Windows 11. And inside of here, type WSL space hyphen hyphen set hyphen default hyphen version space two and hit enter. Then you'll see something about this. Please visit this URL here to download it. It'll be aka.ms slash WSL two kernel if you need to download a kernel. Otherwise, if you see this here completed successfully, you don't need to worry about downloading anything. If it tells you to download a kernel, simply control click on the link to open up the web page. And it'll look something like this. Click the download button over here to download it onto your PC and open it up when it's done downloading. Then once you've installed that, once again, try to run the WSL set default version two command. And when you've done so, it says successfully, we can go ahead and install an operating system. For me, as I mentioned before, I'll choose Ubuntu. So I'll open up the Microsoft store. Then I'll search for Ubuntu and you can pick one of thousands of versions here. I'll simply click the latest Ubuntu here, install, just make sure it's from the correct developer by clicking on it, and it should be canonical group limited, as some of these may not be something you'd want. I'll simply click install here, and Ubuntu will download and install shortly. It's about a 670 megabyte download. Then when it's done installing, click on open, then the installer starts up like this, and I'll click OK, then select a language here, Continue, enter a username, which must be a lowercase, enter a password, continue. I'll leave everything as is here. This is essentially where our Windows files are located within Ubuntu, in this case, MNT, mount, setup, and we'll just wait for Windows Subsystem for Linux to set up Ubuntu for us. Then when it's done downloading, we'll see these over here, reminding us to update Ubuntu. We'll get there in just a moment. Anyways, so Ubuntu is now open. I'll sudo apt get update hyphen y and and sudo apt get upgrade hyphen y and enter then i'll enter my password and apt get will update and upgrade our system and all of the packages on it so we can start getting to work if you're like me and you get stuck here essentially your WSL Ubuntu is just using the wrong DNS servers. It's trying to speak to the host, in my case, my PC, and from them, it's going nowhere. So all we need to do is control C to cancel. Then we need to nano etsy resolve with no E dot C-O-N-F, hit enter, or rather sudo this, sudo nano, and we'll need to change the name server here to whatever you'd use, in my case, 8888, or maybe Cloudflare's 1111. Then we can try the command once more and things should update properly. There we go. Now, all we need to do is lsb underscore release tag A and we should see what version of Ubuntu we're running. In my case, 2204.1, which is good. Everything's working as it should. If you'd like, you can also sudo apt install maybe NeoFetch. There we go. You can see the version that I'm running here is currently on Windows 10 8664. Awesome. So I'll control C or wait for this to finish and we can start installing our desktop environment. Sudo apt install tag Y and we'll be using XFCE4 in this video, though you could pick a couple of different options here, even Ubuntu desktop. I'll hit enter and wait for this to download. Then I'll run sudo apt install XFCE4 goodies. Yes. And I'll copy and paste four commands from the description down below. 
these ones here. Essentially, we're backing up the XRDP configuration file. We're changing the port to 3390, setting the max bit depth to 32 bit, just for better colors as we're not optimizing for network here because we're simply connecting to it from our local PC. Then I'll also run echo XFCE4 session into X session. Now we'll need to edit a file and set up our RDP. I'll sudo nano etsy xrdp start wm dot sh and inside of him I'll use the arrow keys to go down, add a hash to comment out these last two lines here and we'll tell it to start xfce4 here. So start xfce4, control s to save, control x to exit. Now we can start our desktop environment. Now we can start our RDP with sudo etsy init dot d xrdp start. Now we've started our RDP server, I can simply open remote desktop connection like you would on any other computer. And inside of here, I'll run localhost colon 3390 to connect to our server. Then you'll be prompted to accept a few times, simply click yes to all of them, and you'll be presented with this. I'll enter my username and password here, hit enter, and after it goes black, we should see a desktop environment like this. It's pretty simple. Awesome. Now I'll simply remove this, as I don't need it, and we have a desktop environment here. Of course, this isn't actually Ubuntu's desktop environment. This is XFCE form, so if you don't like it, you can always change it. If we go ahead and close out of this, or rather head back to our server, and we nano the startwm file, you can see we used start xfce4 here to start our desktop environment. Essentially, you'd change this to whatever you'd want, this will do most of the things a normal Linux computer will do, though it's running inside of WSL, which is really useful. So anyways, that's really about it for this quick video. To double check, I'll run Neo Fetch, and you can see over here, Windows 10. Awesome. So that's really about it for this video. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Techno here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.